Hello, and welcome back to the Trader Movement Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the main features and behaviors of overfit trading strategies and the risks they pose to both traders and Darwin investors. Overfit trading strategies typically perform well in backtesting environments, creating the illusion that they exploit the market inefficiency being targeted really well. However, when deployed in a live trading environment, their performance is disproportionately different to what was observed in backtesting, and this is due primarily to their modeling historical data too closely. This prevents such strategies from generalizing well to unseen data in future. And of course, this is to the detriment of both the traders launching them live with capital and Darwin investors backing them with capital. So for your convenience, today's podcast is organized into four main themes. We'll talk about types of overfit trading strategies, typical features and behaviors of the same, how traders can address overfitting, and how investors can avoid overfit Darwins. So let's talk about the various types of overfit trading strategies, and uh, we can generalize them into two main categories. Firstly, model-focused where the strategy fits historical data too closely and exhibits high variance when tested on unseen data. And then we have risk-focused, where the performance of a weak model is compensated for with an unrealistic, loss-averse risk management rationale. Now, in the former, model-focused, a trading strategy will typically perform very well in backtesting but either stagnate for lengthy periods of time or fail entirely in live testing. From both a trader and investor's perspective, such strategies are easy to identify visually. If you look at their charts, returns will at some point reach a point of inflection where they no longer appear similar to historical performance. Imagine a curve going upwards in back testing and downwards in live trading, to take a very simple example. In the latter, risk-focused, a trading strategy will demonstrate smooth, very consistent returns, almost logarithmic in nature at times, in backtesting as well as in live testing for a period of time, making such strategies even more dangerous than the former as they're difficult to identify from looking at just returns charts. So later in today's podcast, we'll discuss certain Darwin investment attributes that can assist both investors and traders in isolating such strategies. But before we get to that, let's now move on to the typical features and behaviors of each of these two categories of strategies we've just discussed. With respect to model-focused strategies, it's usually quite straightforward to identify such strategies that overfit the historical data. Compared to training phases in backtests, their test phases and live performance may demonstrate excess stagnation, larger drawdowns, and or an overall reversal in forecast returns. With regards to the Darwin uh, Analytical Toolkit, this behavior is captured best by the evolution of the following. Experience, performance, risk stability, both positive and negative returns consistency, duration consistency, capacity, loss aversion, and open-close strategy. Low scores or unstable evolution of scores in these attributes, especially in live trading, can serve as a useful indicator in identifying a strategy as being overfit in backtests or otherwise, where in backtests, conventional metrics have been used to assess the performance of said strategies. Now, when a strategy is overfit to training data, the evolution of its scores for the above attributes that we just discussed is likely to demonstrate high variance when subjected to test data and even in live trading. Typically, there are three combinations of attribute scores that demonstrate consistent performance between backtests and live trading when accompanied by a high score for experience, high score for market correlation, and also for risk stability. These three combinations are as follows. The first of these combinations carries a low score for capacity, high scores for both open and close strategy, and high scores for both performance and negative returns consistency. 
Once a strategy with good scores for these in the backtest is launched live, if the scores for the open close strategy and negative res returns consistency, if they progressively decline over time, then the likelihood of the strategy being overfit increases. The second of these combinations carries a moderate score for capacity, a high score for loss aversion, and a high score for performance. If high scores for loss aversion and risk stability progressively decline upon launching live, again, the likelihood of such a strategy being overfit to historical data increases. And lastly, the third one is where we have a high score for performance, a very high score for both positive and re negative returns consistency, or duration consistency for that matter, and a moderate score for loss aversion. A strategy with this combination of scores in the back test is the least likely to be overfit and consequently very difficult to find in the Darwin universe. However, the same rules for monitoring declines in scores applies here to when launched live. With these combinations, traders can therefore benefit from uploading trading strategy backtests to the DarwinX platform for analysis, where you take conventional metrics and add on a layer of our proprietary metrics to further enhance the credibility of your backtest. Examining the evolution of scores received through our analytical toolkit in this way provides a valuable layer of insight into how symmetric performance is likely to be in backtesting versus live trading. For example, if steady evolution of scores is observed over training data, but high variance is observed in test data, then the likelihood of the strategy generalizing well to unseen data in live trading is quite low. Moving on to risk-focused uh, overfit trading strategies. In trading strategies where loss of risk management compensates for poor timing and generates unrealistic returns in backtesting, one or more of the following behaviors can be observed. Firstly, poorly timed trades are not closed for lengthy periods of time. Additional orders are opened in the same direction as poorly timed ones in an attempt to recover the position at incrementally better prices. And third, excess leverage is employed per trade in an attempt to recover losing positions at incrementally better prices. Of the 12 Darwin investment attributes available uh, via the analytical toolkit, this behavior is captured best by the following. Loss aversion combination of low loss aversion and high capacity, risk stability, and market correlation. The evolution of scores received for these investment attributes provides valuable insight into whether a strategy will compensate for inferior timing by employing loss averse risk management practices. Additionally, poor scores for risk stability and market correlation in particular add strong confirmation that risk-focused overfitting is likely the case with such a strategy. Additionally, strongly negative correlation with certain community Darwins may also add confirmation to this risk. How investors can avoid overfit or risky Darwins, as we've just discussed based on the typical features and behaviors of such Darwins, they can do so by monitoring the evolution of a strategy's scores for experience, risk stability, market correlation, performance, loss aversion, capacity, open close strategy, positive and negative returns consistency, and duration consistency. These particular attributes can help Darwin investors exercise caution or even entirely avoid such Darwins where both types of overfit trading strategies that we've discussed so far present themselves. If you enjoyed this podcast today on the effects of uh, overfitting on backtests, how to avoid overfitting in general from both an investor and trader's perspective, and as a trader, what you can do in your backtesting and development lifecycle to avoid the issue of overfitting, or if not to minimize it to the best possible extent before commencing live trading, then please do share your feedback and share this content, this podcast with your colleagues, friends, co-workers, and anyone in your social networks if you think they'd find this useful and beneficial. 
And lastly, if you have any questions or suggestions for further content, be it podcast, video, or blog post content coming out of Darwin X, please do share your thoughts on the Darwin X community forum, where we're always happy to entertain your thoughts and provide you feedback and content accordingly. Thank you very much for your time and see you in the next podcast.